Okay, in order to start computing limits at infinity for general functions, there's two limits that come up quite often that we're actually going to use, and so they're important to just to talk about right now. So if r is a rational number, so bigger than zero, r is a number bigger than zero and is a rational number, then the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x to the r is zero. In other words, this is just saying if you've got 1 over something that's getting big, then the ratio's got to go to zero. So the limit as x goes to infinity, x to the r, r is a positive number, so as you take x getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and you're taking a power of it, the power of r, that's still getting bigger and bigger and bigger, the reciprocal of it is going to zero. If r, so what about the, the limit as you go to negative infinity? Well, the limit as x goes to negative infinity of 1 over x to the r is also zero, but we do have to be careful there. We have to make sure that the r is a number for which x to the r makes sense. So we're saying here that r is a rational number such that x to the r is defined for all x, in particular for negative values of x, then the limit is zero. So this you know, excludes cases like 1 over x to the 1 half. If you had a r value of a half, that's square root of x. So if you had 1 over square root of x, it doesn't make sense to talk about the limit as x goes to negative infinity because square root of x is not defined for negative inputs, not, not defined for negative x values. So it wouldn't make sense to talk about the limiting behavior as x goes to negative infinity of 1 over the square root of x because it's not even defined for negative x values. So that's all this statement here, such that x to the r is defined for all x. It's just saying, you know, just have a look. Make sure your function is defined for negative x values. If it is, okay, then the ratio 1 over x to the r goes to 0 as x goes to negative infinity. So to sum these two statements up, it's really just saying if you've got 1 over something that's getting big, then the ratio is going to 0. And we're going to use this again and again and again. So let's get to the examples. Let's evaluate the limit as x goes to infinity of this cubic polynomial over this other cubic polynomial. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to try to exploit the fact that we know 1 over a power of x goes to 0 as x goes to infinity. I'm going to try to make use of that fact. In other words, if I can push everywhere I see an x, if I can push it into a denominator, of a little piece of the expression, if I can put that x in the denominator, then I know it goes to 0 and I can deal with those limits easily. So the idea is everywhere you see an x, try to make it and get stuck in a denominator of something. Okay, so there's a couple of ways I like to do these limits. One of the ways, and I think this is a good way to sort of first look at this, is to just try to think what's happening. What's happening here? As x gets really big, what is this expression doing? And so I'm going to put this in a thought bubble. This is a really informal way to do it, but it's often helpful to figure out what the answer is without really doing any calculations at all. So what are we thinking? Well, x is getting really big. Okay, so I look at the first expression and I say, well, it's a cubic polynomial. x is really, really big. So this is huge. We're going off to infinity, so x is big, 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 big. What's the dominant term in the top? Well, I've got an x cubed, I've got an x squared, and I've got nothing involving, uh, something in, that doesn't involve x at all. What's the biggest term? Well, I've got this x cubed. If x is really, really big, x cubed is so much bigger than x squared that it's the dominant term. So what I'm going to do is for, as I'm going to think, for x, uh, maybe I'll put huge, because I'm, I'm thinking it's really big. For x huge, 3x cubed minus 4x squared minus 1 all over 6x cubed plus x plus 2. What is that? Well, this is approximately, so there's a little squiggly equal sign here, approximately. This is roughly, well, the, this is the dominant term. Right? When x is really huge, this is all that matters. It's that 3x squared, or sorry, 3x cubed. So that top is roughly just the size of 3x cubed. The other stuff is just tiny compared to that leading term. This is, again, for when x is really huge. What about the bottom? Well, the bottom is roughly 6x cubed. And so all that really matters is that dominant term in the top and the dominant one in the bottom. And that's, well, the x cubes now cancel, and that's 3 over 6, so that's equal to 1 half. So I've just answered the question. What is the value of the limit? It's a half. Okay, this is, as I, I wrote here, I wrote think. 
Right? This is what's going on in our head. This is a very informal calculation. And you might have some objections. You can say, well, how can you just ignore those terms? Uh, why do you just focus on the leading term? Well, once you see a few calculations, you'll see that the, the underlying principles wh why we can do this makes sense. But, it, of course, it involves a formal calculation to see why. And that's where I'm going to do the formal calculation. But I wanted to give you just a way to think about these things. Because this is going to be important for a lot of the ones we do. You can often think about what the answer's got to be before you do any calculations at all. So let's go ahead and look at this first one and make it a little bit more formal. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I'm going to play with this idea of dominant term, and the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to say, well, since x is going to infinity, I'd like x's to be in the denominators. Everywhere I see an x, I want it to be underneath the corresponding expression. So I look at this first numerator, and I say, well, I'm going to factor out an x cubed from everything. And that allows me to force the x's in the denominators of parts of the expression. What about the denominator? I factor out the x cubed as well. And I'm left with a 6 and a 1 over x squared and a 2 over x cubed. Okay. And now I've got an x cubed on top and an x cubed on the bottom. Those can cancel off with each other. And so this is then the limit as x goes to infinity of 3 minus 4 over x minus 1 over x cubed all over 6 plus 1 over x squared plus 2 over x cubed. And now we can use that nice handy fact that we listed up here that said when I'm looking at a limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over a power of x, the answer is going to be 0. The limiting value is going to be 0. So I look at all of these things I've got here. I push the x downstairs because this is going to go to 0, this is going to go to 0, this is going to go to 0, and this is going to go to 0. All of those things are going to 0 in the limit, so the answer is 3 over 6, or 1 half. Same as what I got by just doing sort of this informal thought process. I got the same thing by doing the calculation. Okay, so what was the underlying principle of the calculation here? The underlying principle was, I'm going to take the expression in the denominator, that power of x, the highest power of x, and I'm going to factor it out. And I'm going to do the same thing to the numerator. Factor out the highest power of x and see what ends up cancelling. And you'll notice here that the only things that survived in the end were those two leading terms, that 3 and that 6, because everything else had an x in the bottom. Those were precisely the two coefficients of the leading terms, one on the top and the one on the bottom, because they had the same degree. And that's really what was underlying our thought process back here. The other things didn't matter, because essentially when I did this factorization of this x cubed out of top and bottom, the other things didn't matter because they'd have the x's in the bottom, and when I took the limit as x goes to infinity, they'd go to zero. Okay. So this is the, what's written here in, in our calculation is how you would typically approach a problem like this, but don't forget that you can think through what the answer possibly is by just thinking about what happens when x is big. Okay, so let's look at the next example.